everyone welcome to my channel so if you are enjoying the videos do like share and subscribe my channel that will encourage me a lot so here we are with yet another discussion this is the third part of our discussion on Michel Foucault so the next idea that we are going to discuss is gaze so in uh, philosophy in Lacanian psychoanalytic theory the gaze by gaze we mean that anxious state of mind that comes with the self-awareness that one can be seen and looked at. So you see, is an anxious state gaze. Uh, according to psychoanalytic theory, it will be an anxious state where you are feeling that somebody, somebody is, someone is looking at you. But uh, Foucault gives it a new angle, a new dimension, where he says that gaze can be called as the dynamics of socio-political power relations and the social dynamics of society's mechanisms of discipline. So this is sounding some, something complex. Let me explain it. That it means that uh, how, uh, uh, let us see that in the birth of the clinic, he said that the medical gaze to describe this term. So suppose that the doctor, he is looking at you. So at that point of time, the doctor is powerful. So through his gaze, he is exercising his power. The person who is gazed at, we are, we are inferior. And the doctor who is gazing at us, he is superior. So through this term, the socio dynamics of socio-political power is being, power relations is being explained. So you can see, that uh, in his book also discipline and punish he says that the, the surveillance practices that are followed in prison the surveillance practices that are followed in a hospital by a doctor to the patients these are actually power relations so according to him gaze this explains many of his you can apply it to many of his ideas like biopower okay panopticism where a subject is looked at by the powerful so practices in prison or in school, so different uh, apparatuses of power, they, through their gaze, they are actually exercising their power. You see, in a, a doctor, he is given a cultural hegemony. So we, an intellectual hegemony is there that we say that the doctor, he knows so many things. He is uh, uh, superior than us because he is exercising his power and through gaze. Next is limit experience. What is that? So it tests the limits of ordered reality. So it is an approach which says that uh, you move to the edge of living in terms of intensity and its seeming impossibility. So for Foucault, you can say that uh, for the self, it is like self a contradiction between self expansion and self annihilation. So it is testing the limits of ordered reality so that it is it tests the limit it experiences the experience or the actions which approaches approaches the edge of living that we can say as limit experience next is his idea about power knowledge so Foucault himself he was critical of the idea that humans can reach up to absolute knowledge about the world. He says that the, this notion of absolute knowledge, it is itself a contingent idea. And later on, this was um, replaced by his idea of governmentality, where we have uh, learned that how the government, it uses different techniques and tactics to suppress or to control the freedom of its uh, of the ruled of its subjects so power and knowledge you can say that knowledge is uh, makes one powerful and the powerful in turns in turn he shapes up up knowledge for example uh, an ignorant person okay so he gains knowledge and he becomes powerful and after he becomes powerful he whatever he will say he will himself shape up 
knowledge so now when the king when he will he is powerful when he will say anything because he is the power himself the powerful whatever he will say will be believed by his subjects so you can see that at first knowledge is powerful it makes one powerful and after the that person that subject becomes powerful he exercises his power and he shapes up knowledge himself but he also says foucault also says but the we do we can get knowledge but we can never reach we can never gain absolute knowledge we can never gain absolute knowledge and the powerful he will become knowledgeable using be, become knowledgeable and in turn will also create will also shape up will also give rise to knowledge according to his his opinion according to him he will shape up knowledge that is only that is the only thing that we see in governmentality this idea has been replaced by that where you find that the government it will create knowledge according to its use panopticism is his next idea so panopticon is an institutional building and structure which was designed by jeremy bentham in the 18th century so he was an english philosopher and social theorist so what was panopticon it was a circular structure okay and the inmates of those building they could be they could be seen they could be surveillance could be done by a security guard a single security guard so you can see that how all the inmates their freedom was curtailed and how much they felt that the powerful is watching them is gazing at them so you can relate this idea to that of gaze and you can see that the how the power power is exercised through gaze using uh, the panopticon so in this idea also he says the same thing that the powerful they through their gaze through their surveillance they are exercising their power in his next idea of subjectivism which he has said referred to in the book discipline and punish he says that the subject is a so social construction so we as individuals what we are we are constructed by the society so we are social construction we are post structuralist subject and the subject it is an it is he is there he is existing because of the effect of power and subjectivation to discipline so we are shaped up we are shaped up by the subjectivation by subjectivation to discipline that you can see you are going to schools you are going to hospitals you are going to different apparatuses of security different straight apparatuses who are influencing who are influencing their power by uh, discipline by uh, making you learn discipline so we are a subject who are the effect of power his next idea is parhesia so it is a noun which means free speech if you use it in rhetoric it means to speak candidly or ask forgiveness for so speaking basically it is it means that one who speaks without any it he speaks candidly parhesia zomia it means to use parhesia and parhesiastus which is a noun it means the one who uses this that means the one who speaks the truth to power so the one who is able who is brave enough who is courageous enough who can speak candidly who can speak without any boundation the truth to the power will be called parhesiastus so this is his idea then comes his idea of epimelia here too which means here too means for himself or herself so the term means care for the self so he says that self awareness is not a goal but a way of way to care for oneself so when we are aware of ourselves what we are doing actually we are taking care of ourselves we try to 
after we after we become aware we can try to tra transform ourselves towards towards better towards being better towards the being the uh, in the journey of being better so for to uh, transforming oneself in a better way he also uses the term ethopoin next his idea of visibility is it means that all that carries meaning other than statements so if you say that i fell down so in that maybe your physical hurt in that statement your the that you are physically hurt that can be expressed but associated with that there are many emotions which cannot be stated so visibility means all that carries meaning other than statement maybe you are thinking you are regretting something why you are well, you fell down you are very much ashamed of yourself you are no not ashamed you are feeling embarrassed so there may be many shades of meaning which cannot be stated so it means all which carries meaning other than statements so this is all about our discussion on michel foucault i hope you liked my videos so if you are enjoying it please like share and subscribe my channel thank you for watching